Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Ask Me Anything Love and Sex Show. I am Rebecca Benetov, the world's foremost authority on cultivating your sexual authenticity and using it to empower you in the bedroom and beyond. And that is the best job ever, really, having people, helping people um, claim their arousal and give themselves permission to be who they are in the bedroom. So I feel very gifted and blessed that this is what I'm doing because in my ideal world, all I do is have sex and talk about sex. And I'm going to be joined in that endeavor today, the talking about sex part, uh, by Lee Noto. Lee is a transformational bliss coach. She has a background as an SI, but she has really begun to focus on the integration of your intimate self and your work life so that you can be in bliss, right? And you can find her on leenodo.com, but we've got her here today. So hi, Lee, welcome to the show. Hi, Rebecca, it's such an honor and a pleasure to be here. Awesome, so why don't you tell people, if you would tell me a little bit about how you got, what your path was that led you to where you are now? Sure. Bliss and intimacy. Well, you know, like most people, I started with a corporate gig and I was I was running in the hamster wheel of hustle for many years until I underwent burnout perpetually. Uh, during that time, I was moonlighting as a coach. I was receiving my coaching certification and I also found myself in a really intensive uh, two-year hands-on tantra apprenticeship. So I had the corporate by day, the tantra by night, and it was a really interesting mix of these two seemingly disparate worlds. And I saw where there was a lot of, where there could be a lot of crossover in terms of principles and beliefs. And um, as I was uh, receiving my coaching certification, I thought, wow, it, coaching and the work around sex and intimacy have got to be integrated because there are so many gaps that exist for nearly all of us around uh, our education, our perspective, and how we view ourselves. And so that started me on the journey um, into coaching more specifically around sex and intimacy. And over the past couple of years, I've expanded that to um, help ambitious mission-driven women transition from burnout to bliss with the integration mm -hmm. of who they are as sexual beings as well. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the components that help them make that transition? Well, really, you know, I, I tell people that there's only one thing that we get to focus on, and that is our relationship to self. You know, it seems as if there are a million things happening up here with family and work and, you know, all of the other relationships in our lives. And in truth, if we really got to the core and looked at that relationship to self, everything else would fall into place as it's supposed to, or as it's meant to. And so a lot of the work that I do um, with folks now is looking at what beliefs and identity we hold for ourselves because that is what drives our habits and behaviors. And so if we can get to the core of, of what's subconsciously driving the ship, mm. then we can start to look at everything that's manifesting in the outside world. So a lot of it is through things um, like affirmations and uh, hypnosis, um, as well as other techniques that start to create that fundamental shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do something called access consciousness, which is, is mm. similar, you know, the idea is like to bring up these limiting beliefs that are actually subconsciously running the show and then clear them and using energetic processes that just yes. sometimes you don't even have to know what it is in order to clear it. Like I find a lot of people get caught up in the why. If I can just figure mm -hmm. out why I'm like this, I can fix myself and right. then I'll be better. And you can just do that forever and ever. Right. Yeah. Um, so also this idea of there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. um, I find really so pervasive. And you know, what are your thoughts on that when someone finds themselves plagued with self-doubt? I mean, it's rampant. It's really insidious. And I, I, I think there is not a person that that has not ailed. Mm -hmm. And it is it is the human condition. So no matter where you're from, what you look like, what your sexual orientation is, I think we all at one point or another have had the not enough syndrome. And, you know, most of us continue to carry that with us. And so, you know, 
that is the, I think, the one thing, again, I'm, I'm all for efficiency and effectiveness here. The one thing that if, if we could start to affirm any belief that would radically shift so many other things in our lives, it is, I am already whole and complete as I am. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I've got to remind myself of that all the time. In fact, I have a tattoo on my index finger that says, I am enough. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I'm subliminally messaging myself all the time. And it's something that's, you know, easy to forget and leave behind with all of the social influences around us. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the one thing that if we come back to that, that is our home, our mm -hmm. core, who we are. And that is the one thing, you know, the one belief that holding that for ourselves will really move the needle everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what I, what I observe is that many people tend to go out looking for, if I can get into a relationship, if I can get someone else to love me, that will prove that I am lovable and valid. Unfortunately, the counter is true that if it's not going well, you think you're not valid. And I, I am fond of telling people, become the lover you're looking for. So we really need to get to a place where we already know that we're lovable. Yes, that's that's so true. And that that was what allowed me to manifest my partner. Um, but it's we, we do kind of have it backwards, as you say, because we're waiting to see something before we believe it. Yet how it works in truth is we believe it first and then it appears in our physical world outside of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my ears really perked up when you said, this is how I manifested my partner, because I know yes. a lot of people are in that <laughs> position of wanting. So would you be willing to share some of how you did that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I was in a, in my, my younger dating career, if you will, a, a series of serial monogamy relationships. And then at one point was like, all right, screw this. I'm going to be free or this concept of freedom that I had held. And, um, you know, living as a, a, a younger person in New York City, dating is a beast. You know, there's the dating apps, there's the quick transactional uh, feel of things. And so I was on a few dating apps for some time and had met some nice guys, some, some quality humans. Mm -hmm. And, but throughout that whole time, um, I knew that there was something more. There was, and I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I would journal about it. I would imagine this man, and I would get, I would start to get really clear per the feedback of many of my friends who have created the relationships of their dreams. And so I would journal. I'd get clear. There were nights where I could almost like feel this other person, and you know, many moments where I thought, all right, dude, when is this guy coming? Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing all the things and um, I'll share a really intimate story because I know that's so welcome here. Uh, there was one day when I was in self pleasure and I looked down and I was like, Oh my goodness, I'm so turned on by myself. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, is this a matter of my physicality? And I said, no, what dawned on me in that moment was the, to my core feeling that I had my own back so relentlessly. I was, yeah, it felt so good. Yeah. I, just, wow. Just hearing you say that, I feel my whole body relax. That concept of yeah. having your own back, but we'll go back to it. Keep going. I was so relentlessly. I'd realized yeah. that at that point I was so relentlessly the partner for myself that I was seeking outside of myself. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until that point that I was actually willing to be crying in the mirror and look at myself and still know that I was beautiful mm -hmm. or to be in a place that I might deem <clears throat> less than lovable and still really love myself through that in the way that I would want a man to show up for me. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that that man wasn't going to show up for me in the way that I dreamed of until I could do that for myself. And lo and behold, after that very cosmic self-pleasure practice um he appeared in my life like three weeks later and even for a few months after that i had no idea that he was my partner uh, mm. it was completely platonic and i was still going on failed dating app date after the next until 
until it finally dawned on me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, if, guys, if you're listening to that, there's nothing wrong with starting in the friend zone, right? No. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just love this idea of having, relentlessly having our own back. And some of the, can, hmm. So how does that look? What does that look like? You've given us one really brilliant example. Are there some others of, of in your interactions with people, in your choices you're making in the world? What does it look, feel like and look like to have your own back? Yes. So one of the ones that I've been challenged with the most that I know a lot of women feel challenged with is understanding what my needs are and making requests for them. Mm. And, you know, I see how easily I can do that for others. And now that I'm, I'm with my partner, I see how easily he can support me in that. And I, that was something that I really, really needed to learn for myself. And listen, I'm still on a journey with it, mm -hmm. but it's really giving pause in a moment when I feel like I'm being pulled in a million different directions or I'm up to my, um, you know, fun people pleasing habits to really stop and ask, what do I need right now? Because someone who has my back would ask me, Lee, what do you need right now? Tell me what you need to feel loved, to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And so taking that pause to ask, okay, what do I need right now in any given moment? And to actually have the courage to make a request for that need or to make a request to step away so that I can take a moment has been one of the biggest ways that my body has habituated the fact that I'm mm -hmm. now really my own champion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah what a, what a great way to put it i'm my mm. own champion yeah and yeah. i mean i'm just i'm so focused on what you're saying and I, I can hear the hubbub in the background and isn't that a great metaphor for life right life is filled <laughs> with dishes crashing cars yes. needing fixing like stuff happening and for me part of having my own back is being willing to hold the energy of how, who i want to be and how i want to feel regardless of whatever else is going around um you know cool right that we can just be here with each other mm. um, I took a course once, this is totally off topic, but a communication course where one of the exercises was that you had to have a conversation, you had to do an exercise, and the teachers were all around trying to distract you. And they would do crazy things like put whipped cream on your head and tickle with you, you with a feather. And, and you got to really see that actually attention is a choice. We can choose to be distracted by everything going on around us, or we can choose to be right here, right now. Um, total aside. Yes, that's, that's such a relevant and great story. Yeah, but I think it's also, it does tie into what you were just saying, like we can have our back no matter what else is going on. One of the challenges I, I notice has been coming up for me is that when I relentlessly choose for me, other people don't always like it. And I have to be willing to let them not like it, which really goes up against my people pleasing souls. Like I, I'm somewhat good at asking for what I want. I'm good at knowing what that is. And I'll even speak it. But then I really want you to take it and be happy about it. Oh, yes, that I, I, I resonate with what you're saying. And it's definitely pushed up against my comfort zone with family in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool. So what else do you have to say about getting to bliss from burnout? And, and let's talk about it. Let's be specific. Burnout in the dating game. Oh my gosh. Well, I feel like I just, you know, I, I feel like I rather recently came from that world and I was talking to my mom about this. Um, I was like, man, dating can really take a lot out of you. Mm -hmm. This serial dating game, especially here in New York City, where there is so much happening. Um, and with the attention span of this generation on online dating apps and technology, it's almost as if, you know, we've, we've got the attention span of goldfish. And we're, we're going from one date to the next. Um, and we're, you know, what I have experienced, interestingly enough, both in myself and in men that I've dated, is that they're, we're almost always looking for the next best thing. We're never quite satisfied. Our, our hunger is never quite satiated. And so we're always hedging our bets, trying to have a pool of people um, on, you know, in our, our Rolodex, so to speak, 
of options. You know, so and so didn't answer. Let me text this other person, or let me see what this person is doing tonight. Um, and it can really create a lot of burnout. And um, I tell you what, it was it was exhausting for me to to share my story over and over and over again when uh, the relational aspect of it with some of these men wasn't quite sticking. Mm -hmm. You know, it always felt as if there was, I guess, something missing. Um, and so I've seen a lot of burnout with, with people dating, especially here in New York. Um, and I hear that it's, it's not quite as much of an epidemic in other places, um, but it definitely, you know, I, I've seen people look for the next best thing. Mm -hmm. So is there a bottom line, something that people can do when they notice they're burnt out, they just want to walk away from it to make the experience more pleasurable? perhaps? Yes, that's a great question. You know, what I would do when I was in that place, because I've gone through cycles of serial dating, cycles of celibacy, is I would simply take a step back. Mm -hmm. I would take a bit of a step back and reconnect with myself, yeah. reconnect with my needs and my desires. And if at that point, uh, you know, a suitable suitor happened to pop across my screen or in line behind me somewhere, then I would definitely entertain it. Um, but it, the signs that I was getting during that time was that it was time for me to take pause and reassess what feels really important for me and where do I want to be putting my time, focus, and energy. Right on. Yeah. I mean, one of the questions I love is asking myself, am I doing this from necessity or choice? Am I doing this because I'm bored and incomplete unless I meet someone? Or am I doing it because I'm choosing it, it feels like it'll be fun, it'll be a contribution? And I love that. And I also like to tell people, especially with online dating, if it's not fun for you, don't do that. It's not going to create. If you're doing it as this gauntlet you have to run or some drudgery, you're probably not going to meet people. You're more likely to find something else where you can go and be your lit up best self, which is going to be the most attractive to other people. Right. Absolutely. And I love that having that question as a, a way to make a distinction. Am I doing this from necessity or from choice mm. that creates a, such a, um, a stage for empowerment? Mm -hmm. Cool. I, I, something else, another question that I'm curious about, because these questions are all, we don't write the questions or discuss them beforehand. It's just like, what do I really want to know your thoughts on? And um, it has to do with the role of being connected to your, your physical self, your body, your intimate self. Um, what impact does that have on your stress level? And if you're finding yourself like in a work situation, which doesn't feel like it's related to your sexuality or your body at all, but is there a connection? Um, and how can one, yeah. support, how can your body support you? Right, oh, absolutely. You know, I find that our bodies are always looking for ways to support us and send us messages. And we just unfortunately haven't been taught how to create that two-way communication. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are chomping at the bit to let us know what's up, what we need, what we don't like. And we can sometimes pummel through that um, in favor of the intellect. And the intellect serves a wonderful purpose and it, it can't do it all alone and mm -hmm. doesn't want to do it all alone. And so when I was at the height of my burnout and stress, my body was ringing the alarms and I was completely blind to it. And I was at the point of cystic breakouts all over my face, full body hives, panic attacks. And one day I woke up in 2017 and half my face was paralyzed for about two months. And so if that wasn't a, a slap in the face, mm. yeah, you know, I don't know what was. I, mm -hmm. I finally got the cue. Um, but yes, our signs that our body gives us and stress totally impacts our desire to engage sexually. Um, our libido, our stamina, our energy, sexually and in general. Um, and, and, you know, this is probably not news to anyone, but stress really impacts um, just our, our sense of sexuality and sensuality. Mm -hmm. And so anything that we can do to um, remove the barriers to our natural sense of pleasure through the stress stressors that present themselves is 
I'd say a, a pretty seamless way to come back to that two-way communication that the body has for us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm curious to hear, given your area of expertise, what you see uh, around this question as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's such a, sometimes we feel like we're too stressed to want to have intimacy, even with ourselves. The irony is that if you were willing to take that time to be intimate with yourself, or someone else, you would be less stressed. So how do you do that? I mean, slowly, right? And I love your body, what do you need right now? Body, what do you want? And for a couple that maybe is looking to get intimate, but one of them feels like they have a lot on their mind, well, what could you do to get, first get a little pressure out of the system? Does she have to answer all her emails before she's willing to come to bed? Okay, let her answer the emails or help her do the dishes or whatever. Um, and then just start. You know, not every sexual encounter has to be fireworks and a crescendo. What if it would be enough to just lay in bed together and snuggle or relate to yourself? You know, um, one thing I like to give to clients is to give yourself just moisturize from your toes to your head while looking in the mirror and just really being with your body, you know, and because it's, yes. after being ignored for a long time, our bodies aren't really sure we're going to listen. And right. we have to build that trust and that connection by continuously, like you said, coming back to what does my body need? And, and you know, yeah, your boss might be saying, I need this by such and such deadline. Okay, great. If you, took, if you went outside for five minutes and put your feet in the grass and, and got a little fresh air, would you come back and be that much more productive and do your work that much more quickly? Right. And you know, I, I love that you gave that metaphor because it's a great illustration mm -hmm. of how quick and easy it can be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have, we don't have to go away on a vacation to Europe for two weeks <laughs> to reset. You know, I mean, it's lovely. Yeah, not that um, I wouldn't, universe. Right, already. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and everything is available for us right here. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's what I think is the, the most well-kept secret and a uh, secret that's in plain sight is that everything is right here already mm -hmm. for us and yeah. as soon as we step into that and and really own that well then the world's our oyster that's freedom mm -hmm. absolutely it's all right here i love that the banquet and we just have to be willing to see it and choose it and then a few minutes later you get to choose something else so Fabulous. Well, this has been really fun. I want to give you a minute to tell everybody how they can find you and find it. So tell us all the places, all the things. All the places. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so uh, it was such a pleasure to be here, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me on today. Uh -huh. And I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, so for those who are looking to find me, uh, you can find me at leenoto.com. That's L-E-E-N-O-T-O.com. And then I am Lee Noto on both Facebook and LinkedIn. And then at Lee Noto underscore on Instagram. And you can always drop me a line to my email address, hello at Lee Noto .com. I would look forward to hearing. Good, excellent, wonderful. Well, yeah, I've really enjoyed the conversation too. And, and one of the things that actually I loved is that you wrote to me and said, hey, I would love to be on your radio show which the radio show ha um, is the back episodes are still available on blog talk radio of the ask me anything love and sex show. And I did that for a couple of years and now we've got this new series on video. But one of the things that immediately that telegraphed to me is that you saw your value and you were willing to be visible. Thank you. That is a beautiful thing. And it's something that I wish for everyone, right? That we just really, that's why I got into this so that everybody knew, knew their value, knows their worth, and is willing to be seen and make connections if they choose to. So thank you. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for a wonderful conversation. I really enjoyed it. And for those of you looking for me, as you know, Pleasure Evolution TV on YouTube. Also my website, pleasureevolution.com. And now I have a new website, rebeccabenito.com, which actually is all about my healing work. Um, for those who don't want to read articles about flogging and how to give yourself permission to be non-monogamous. There, yes, there are some people for whom that is not of interest. So that is um, where more of my healing work lives and energy work. 
and we'll be back again with another episode of the Ask Me Anything Love and Sex show. So thank you so much for joining us today. And until we see you again, remember, do what gets your panties wet. Bye.